In the previous module, we looked at Camera Raw's Convert to Grayscale panel, which provided a set of mixed color sliders that adjusted the density of individual colors based on the original values in the raw file. Well, in Photoshop, there are several ways of converting color images to black and white, and one in particular is the black and white adjustment window. Now, it's located just up underneath layer, new adjustment layer, and you'll find it just underneath color balance. Now, unlike other methods of converting color images to black and white, the black and white adjustment leaves your images in RGB as opposed to converting them to uh, converting the color mode to grayscale, which can be thought of as sort of a true um, black and white because it strips all color values from the image. Now, uh, if you're interested in actually utilizing the uh, grayscale color mode, if you just go up to image here, and go to mode, you'll find grayscale just here, and that'll allow you to convert RGB or CMYK images to grayscale, where it strips all the color values. Now, the advantage of keeping your images in RGB is that when it comes to printing your images on an LED photographic printer, you have more control over how your images turn out. You see, photographic printers print in RGB, which means they convert grayscale images to RGB before printing, which can result in a shift in color and the introduction of color casts in your black and white prints. Now, we'll discuss exactly how to combat this issue when we get to module 2.9 on color management. Now, the black and white adjustment uh, panel has a set of built-in color presets, as you can see up the top here, just by clicking on this little drop-down menu. Now, these presets uh, essentially try to mimic um, or achieve what you would essentially um, get out of using a color filter when shooting with black and white film. There are also other presets that are also very descriptive, such as um, maximum black and maximum white. So as you jump through these, they'll actually change the color sliders uh, to, yeah, basically represent the same type of result or a similar result that you'd get if you were shooting with film uh, using that particular type of filter. So for example, with a red filter, you'd get a very dark um, uh, you, your blues in your sky would turn out very dark, and in this image, I've only got a little bit of blue up the top here, but you'll see that that is very dark, and and um, any pink or magenta areas turn out very white, as you can tell by that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the black and white adjustments panels also has a series of uh, sliders here that change with those presets. Now, you can also adjust them yourself manually, um, the same way you would if you're using camera raws, um, convert to grayscale and adjusting the sliders in the hue, saturation and luminance uh, panel. So along with these color sliders, we also have a tint checkbox. And just by checking this box, we introduce a tint into our image. And you can click on the actual color value that's here and play around with actually selecting an appropriate color. And it's as simple as just moving your mouse around the actual color palette to find a color that you um, are pleased with. You can even choose to um, change it, the actual hue or the saturation just by checking on these boxes and increasing the percentage, for example, till you get, uh, you know, an effect that you're relatively happy with. Now, along with tint, we also have this little click and drag icon up the top here. Now this can be quite useful, but to be honest, I really don't use it that much. But what it enables you to do is essentially click on a an area or a specific color value in your image using this little eyedropper tool and simply drag your mouse either to the left or the right. And by doing that, you're actually adjusting the sliders in the black and white panel um, in order to get a particular value. As you can see here, I've darkened off the sky, and if I wanted to, I could go down and darken off um, the grass values down the bottom here too. So that can be quite fun to play with um, for those people that really like, you know, the hands-on sort of feel of clicking the mouse in order to get a certain effect. Um, but personally, I prefer the sliders because I know which colors I'm actually working with when I'm actually making my adjustments. 
So that's the black and white adjustment window in Photoshop. Make sure you check it out as you can have a lot of fun creating some very dramatic black and white photographs.